In this video, we will be explaining how to sell art on Saatchi Arts. As you can see in the screenshot right now, you see that I've sold some stuff, some work on the platform myself. And so we will be focusing on selling art because most artists focus on making art instead of selling art. And as a result of that, the art that is not selling at all is piling up in their studio up until the point that it becomes too much. And then they think about quitting. Because why would they be making more of the thing that is not selling in the first place? And then before they know it, they quit their 35 in some low level entry job, kind of quitting on their dreams. And so in the next 10 minutes, we will be explaining you how to sell art on Saatchi Art specifically or online in general. And so if you don't have 10 minutes out of your day, to learn how to sell art, then let's face it, you're not gonna figure out how to sell art anyway. And so let's dive right into this video. Now there are two things that you want to do. Number one is you want to optimize your page for conversion, for sales. And then number two is drive traffic towards your art. And driving traffic is gonna be in two ways, or SEO or driving traffic yourself targeted art collectors to your sales page on Saatchi. So first let's talk about building your profile on Saatchi and, and, and building that landing page that can convert. Now the first thing that you want to do of course is having good images, you know, having quality photos of your artworks, not just because you might be providing art prints on Saatchi, but just in general, this is very important. A crappy image of your art will not sell at all. And a lot of people think it comes over as amateuristic. That's not true at all. Amateurism is good. There's nothing wrong with being an amateur. An amateur that, that is passionate, that is going for it, that is just, that is just small and has some, some, some flaws, is very attractive. People want to buy from that passionate amateur. They do not want to buy from somebody who doesn't care about their own arts. This is not amateuristic. This is just plain old stupid. You know, you'd, like if you have bad images of your art, you're showing an artist that doesn't even care about his own art and that's not going to sell. And so nothing wrong with amateurism. There is something wrong with you uh, hating your own product. And so, so that's just obvious. Now, the second thing that you want to do is building a profile with authority building aspects with lines in your uh, profile description, in your about section, stuff like that, that show that you're serious, that, that show that, that show some awards, show some magazine features, so some stuff that builds authority and sets you apart from the rest. Now, the third thing that you want to do is providing descriptions that are different from the descriptions that you provided on other artworks. And so each artwork needs its own description. It cannot be the same. If you look at profiles on Saatchi, you see that 99% of artists have the same description under every artwork that they post. Now this is duplicate content. First of all, Google will not like this at all and will therefore rank the Saatchi pages there less high in the Google ranking. And so Saatchi doesn't want that, of course. So they're, they're gonna punish those artists and, and give them less credibility and then other artists who don't do that, give them more credibility and, and more traffic on that website. And so you don't want to have duplicate content for Google's sake. You also don't want to have duplicate content for Saatchi's sake. The audience attention rate on your profile will matter, which means that people watching your art for let's say 10 seconds, it's completely different than people watching your art for 10 minutes. You want to go towards the 10 minutes mark where people read the description of your art and then go to another artwork and read that description because they're curious and then another artwork and another artwork and another artwork. And, and, and so you want to make sure that the bounce rate, first of all, the bounce rate on your image is very low. So people don't go to your image and then go to some other website or go away to another artist. And you want to make sure that the time they spend on your art and your profile is higher than average. You can do that with descriptions. And so descriptions are very important for those two main reasons. Now, and this is important. This is a mistake that I made myself. What I try to do at some point, as you can see in the screenshots, is provide some extra authority building in the description itself. 
with some magazine things, some, some stuff that people could then click on to read further about my stuff. That is not smart. Why? Because what you're doing there is you're taking that traffic that is already on the Saatchi website and then you're, you're pushing it out to another website. This is, not, this is not what you should do. And so learn from my mistakes. Don't do that because Saatchi will not like that. These other websites will like that, but Saatchi will not. And so, so don't do that. Do that perhaps on your own website because you want to have some backlinks or whatever you're, you're, you're searching for, but don't do that on their website. Now let's talk about the driving traffic part because this is probably the most important one. If you don't have traffic coming towards your artworks on Saatchi Art and it's simple, then you're not going to sell any art. And so this is very important. Let's talk about the SEO game first. The keyword research type of game. Now, obviously what you want to do is take all the um, examples and all the tips that I gave in other videos into account. You want to use Google uh, Analytics to find some keyword. You, you want to do everything that you can. But on Saatchi Art specifically, I want to mention one thing is, is that you can see which keywords other artworks are using. Other artists are using, not artworks. They cannot use any keywords, but artists are putting under their artists. So what you want to do is you want to go towards artists who are selling on Saatchi Art. And then you want to look for artists that have similar art to your art and then look at the keywords that they are using. These keywords are driving traffic towards their designs at this particular moment. And so you want to use those keywords as well. The keywords that they are using that are relevant to your art, you want to use those as well. And so that is something specific to, to Saatchi that I would recommend definitely doing yourself. Now, beyond the keyword research, one more thing that is very important in the SEO game is which type of art that you make. Because some art is SEO oriented and other art is not SEO oriented at all. And so if you are, for example, making seascapes, watery tropical seascapes, then that is very SEO oriented. You can drive a lot of traffic from SEO with that. If you are doing nude portraits, you can drive a lot of traffic uh, in an SEO way. There are always people searching for nude portraits. You know, if you are doing something that's very specific to you that nobody has ever heard of before, then that is not going to drive a lot of traffic. If you, for example, like me, make paintings with lightning, then, then that particular type of art will inherently not really get a lot of traffic from SEO. And so you have to understand which artwork you have to put a lot of research in from SEO perspective and which artwork you don't have to put any research in because otherwise you're wasting a lot of time. And so be very conscious about that. Now, when it comes to driving traffic yourself, a lot of people look at Saatchi or look at how many artists are on that website. I think 40,000 plus. And then they think, wow, this is a lot of competition. Surely those best selling artists must have insane social media followings that they can use to then drive traffic towards Saatchi art and sell more art. And how can I ever compete to those artists? And, and that is somewhat a valid thought. As in, yes, there is a lot of competition, but when you actually look at the best selling artists on Saatchi art, you don't see insane social media followings. This is some, simply not true. If you look at the best selling artists, they have less social media followers than I have. And, and so if you look at the, the featured artists, most of them don't have any social media followers or basically very few social media followers on all these platforms. And so, so what they're doing is clearly not driving traffic from social media to such and then selling in that way. That's not what they're doing. And that's not how it works. And so what you want to do is instead of having a hundred thousand followers on social media, what you want to do is having a lot of art collectors that are following you. You want to have targeted, a targeted following. What you want to have ideally is collectors that you know like your art, that are collecting similar art to your art, that are connected to you and then driving those to Saatchi Art if you want to push your, your sales up there a little bit and have more chance of becoming a featured artist, for example. Now, explaining that would be another 15 minutes, which I actually did in another video called How to Find Art Collectors on Instagram. And so if you want to go that route, I would highly recommend watching that video. and. 
And if you don't, if you want to just have another video on how to sell art online, then I would recommend how to sell art on Instagram. A lot of the principles that I cover there are applicable to Saatchi, are applicable to any other social media platform or marketplace for artists online. And so, yeah, make sure to ring the bell, subscribe and comment and all of that stuff. I hope to see you again sometime, you know. Ciao, ciao.